It's an impossible choice, one that no parent should have to make. Surrender the child you have lovingly raised in order to take back the child to whom you gave birth. It's the unthinkable dilemma facing two mothers after their babies were switched at birth. Now the children are four and the mothers have only recently discovered the truth. It is a story that's as heartbreaking as it is perplexing, a mix-up as bizarre as any hospital could make. Because these two children are not even the same sex. There's no greater love than a mother's. And there's no greater sadness than losing a child. One way or another, Nazipo and Minor will lose either the child they raised from birth or the child they gave birth to. It is a choice no mother should ever have to face. Do you remember the words they used? Yes. They said, the baby is not yours. And I almost died, because it felt like I had just lost the child. It's bedtime, and that means story time for Zama. This story will end happily, but Zama's and Nazipo's may not. They started here on August the 2nd, 2010, at the Oliver Tambo Memorial Hospital in Johannesburg. In the maternity ward, two young mothers have just given birth, one to a baby boy, the other to a girl. Everything went well, and they showed me the baby, and actually I gave birth to a baby girl. For Nazipo, who already had a son, a baby girl was the answer to her dreams. We had everything we wanted, a boy and a girl, and that's all. Eleven mothers gave birth by caesarean section that day, but for two of them, an unfortunate set of circumstances would change their lives forever. Both mums needed post-surgery care, so didn't get to see their babies for any great length of time. But critically, they were attended to by the same midwife, who somehow put the wrong name tags on each baby, despite helping to deliver them, and despite their different genders. Immediately separated from her newborn and in a haze of painkillers, Nazipo did not get to see her baby again for another two days. He didn't even look like me. And what's worse, uh, I got to change his nappy. I found out that it's a boy. And that just blew me away because I knew I gave birth to a baby girl. What did you say to the nurses? I, I asked them if they had made a mistake and they said no. And they actually laughed because they thought I was making that story up. With the hospital ignoring her claim that she'd given birth to a girl, Nazipo took the baby boy home and called him Zama. A little brother to Bandil. But in your mind, had you resolved your concerns? In my mind, it was that I made a mistake, and so I just took the blame and kept quiet. I said, maybe I made a mistake. Nazipo didn't have much to give Zama other than love, a single mum living in a poor Johannesburg neighbourhood. utterly unaware that on the other side of the city, another mother was raising the little girl Nazipo had given birth to. Oh, five, five. Yeah. So when you took your baby home yes. from the hospital, did yes. you have any doubts that this was your child? No, I don't have a doubt, it's my child. What can hardy? Unlike Nazipo, Mina was sure from the moment of birth that Tandy was her baby, her daughter. They haven't changed. 
But two and a half years later came the heart-wrenching truth when Zama's father demanded a DNA test. One, two, three. Oh. I went there and we were not a match. The baby's blood didn't match mine's or his. When you saw Zama then after those results, did you feel any differently towards him? No, I didn't. It made me love him even more because obviously he didn't have anyone to take care of him. I was the only one and I couldn't just abandon him. He was still mine. Is that how you thought of him? It still is your baby? Yes. Zama wasn't hers, but whose was he? And where was Nazipo's child? The South African Department of Health tested all the other mothers who'd given birth that day. They had to find out where my baby was, my real, real baby. Finally, there was just Minor and Tandy left to check. They test all the living mothers, so now it's only me now. And then they say, yeah, it's not your biological baby. It's not your biological baby. Yes, yeah. I am not the baby's mother. So I say, no, you lie. I start to scream the time. I say, no, you lie. This is my baby. They say, no. And I start to cry now. I say, no, this is my baby. OK. They say, no, be strong, you see. I say, no, no, this is my baby. I start my body to shake. I'm shaking the whole body now. They try to give me the water. I say, no, I want my baby. This is my baby. They say, no. There is nothing easy about any of this. Made stark when you see the women and their children come together. For the moment, for each mother, weekly meetings like this are their only chance to spend time with their biological children. Until it's decided which mother will have custody of which child. What was the moment like when you got to see your daughter? Oh my God, it was so amazing. The first time I, I actually cried when I saw her. It seemed as if I've known her like my whole life. So I was so happy, I was so happy. Did you want to take her home? That's how I wished. I wished I could just take her home with me. And that broke my heart. What makes it worse is that Mina herself refuses to believe the DNA tests. No science in the world can convince her that Tandy is not her natural born daughter. Zama, and she has no feelings for Zama. Zama, Hagi. But do you accept that biologically that you have a son, not a daughter? I accept it, but you know. That baby that I, she grew up with me, still is my baby. When you see Zama, what sort of feelings do you have for him? I'm not feeling nothing. I'm not feeling nothing. I saw he's a baby. Yes, they say he's my baby, but according to me, After an hour of hugs and catching up on her daughter's well-being, Nazipo must say goodbye again. What is it like to say goodbye to your daughter? It's always sad. 
I mean, my heart becomes happy as we arrive and it breaks little by little as I watch the clock on the wall ticking. It's almost uh, time to go and we'll have to separate again. Nazipo is yet to tell Zama or Bandil of the mix-up. At stake is not just the bond between mother and child, but between brothers. Have you ever considered not telling them? Yes, but I, I really have to tell the truth so that they see that I'm not just, I wasn't living a lie. The future for these children is currently being decided by the High Court of Pretoria, a decision guaranteed to bring a great deal of pain since each mother wants the opposite outcome. What would you like to see happen? What do you think the court should say? Yes, the court, they were saying they will swipe the baby. Yes. But I won't think we'll survive. So if I'm understanding you, you're saying if the court makes you give your daughter away, Yes. that you cannot survive that decision? I think I will be kill myself. It's better to, to die because I like my daughter so much. Mm. What do you want the court to decide? Having to take and keep your biological child the one you don't have a bond with, the one you'll have to start all over getting to know. Is that what you want? You want the court to decide Please, that your daughter yes. goes home with you? Yes. And Zama goes home with this other family? Yes. Even though it's going to break our hearts, but it's, it's what it's supposed to happen. I don't know how you can say that. You know, when Zama cries when you go away from him. I mean, what do you think it would do to him to live with, the, with these strangers? Uh, I'm just, as I said, it's going to break lots and lots of hearts. I have a four-year-old. I could never imagine giving him away. I mean, neither how would you I, recover from that? Uh, neither do I. I don't want to give him away, but I'm, I'm just caught up in two worlds and I'm the one suffering in between. Despite facing such uncertainty and such heartache, Mina and Nazipo are drawing on extraordinary resilience, forming their own little family of four Bye -bye. and refusing to give in to the despair of a future no longer in their hands. Do you ever expect your lives to be whole again? Yes, and actually, I think it has brought us growth as individuals. Look at us today, we're still standing, and I guess we have to be strong to face it and face whatever is coming our way. I hope that they both get the love that they deserve and nothing less. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.